Guys, welcome back to Hollywood Mechanic, and today we are talking about the first electric vehicle that I have repaired at Hollywood Mechanic. And what is it? Is it a Tesla? No, it's a Rivian. And we're going to be telling you a little bit about how I did that, and I've already made a video about it in the past under the McLaren 720S suspension. So, guy comes along, his Instagram handle is um, sort of bucket. He contacts me because he saw my video on the McLaren suspension and says, hey, I have this Rivian and no one will work on the suspension for me and I can't get the faults to go away on the dash. Tells me it's the same Tineco um, Monroe shock system that's on the McLaren 720S and he saw that I have a machine to fill it. Uh, so he wanted to know if I could do it for him. So he brought, I told him, go ahead, bring it by and we'll see what we can do. And I ordered connectors for his car because the connectors are different on the Rivian than they are on the McLaren. I figured we would just swap those out. Uh, they are threaded as quarter inch NPT on the Rivian. That's the male threads on the suspension. So I ordered some QC4 from Swage Lock uh, male connectors to then uh, go on there. Male connector with a female quarter NPT. And uh, he came by, we swapped them out. Uh, everything worked great. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a video of uh, one of the lines that was damaged in the accident that we replaced. Okay, so we replaced that line and how did we go about filling it? Well, first of all, you need to get all the fluid out of the system. You can go to each corner of the suspension and remove the bolts that hold the lines uh, to the bottom of the shocks, take those off and then using your quarter in PT, um, you can just blow compressed air through them and catch the fluid in a bucket. You need to get all the fluid out. Once you have one corner blown out, you put that, you connect that line, go to the next corner, take those lines loose, because you need to make sure that the only opening is where you're draining the fluid to get all the fluid in that circuit to come out. So you'll take down the next corner lines, put a bucket under it, can blow compressed air in the back, connect them back again, go to the, and do all four corners that way, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the pump and the uh, housing down. You may need to remove the rear bumper section to do that, it's pretty simple, it's just some tins and eights, and then it pops out like a standard bumper. Then you remove the um, 10 millimeter bolts that hold the pump and the reservoir down. It has these little clips on the side that you're gonna need to pop out. Uh, once you pop those apart, you can Pull it apart, just be careful of the wires going into the side. Uh, there is a little four or five millimeter, I think it's a four millimeter Allen screw that is the reservoir cap. You will need to fill it with fluid. Now if you've had a leak in the system, um, you need to make sure there's no air in that pump, in that line between the pump and the solenoids. So what you can do is um, take down the lines from the uh, rear passenger side shock and go ahead and jump that, those two solenoids on that valve box, jump them one at a time, and manually supply power. You're gonna wanna supply uh, 12 volt positive to the white wire, mm, and no, black wire and 12 volt negative to the white wire, and that will allow you to run that pump. And all you need to do is run it for a, a second or two seconds just to get fluid flowing through that line and up to that valve. Uh, so you'll jump the solenoid, run the pump for a second, remove the solenoid power. You'll hear the pump's whine change as it starts to build pressure and, rem and then remove power from the pump and then jump the other one uh, and for a few, just a few moments, just literally a second and a half while supplying power to the pump. And again, you'll hear the pressure of the pump drop once you open that solenoid and then after a second, uh, remove the power from the solenoid, have it close, and you hear the pump start to build pressure again, remove power from, this, from the pump, okay? That means you have no air now in the valve block right there and that line. Go ahead and top off the fluid in the reservoir, and don't put the pump and reservoir away yet. You're gonna have to top off the fluid one more time before you put it away. Next thing you're gonna do is make sure all your lines are connected again, swap over that that fitting to the QC4 that I use, and then you're gonna use this machine. Very simple machine. If you want this machine, it's this and this is all it is. Uh, then, you know, reach out to me. 
I'll be happy to sell you one. I'll sell it to you for two grand, ship to you. But you can make it for probably like 600 bucks if you just buy all the things that I'm about to tell you to buy. You're gonna need an air conditioning compressor style vacuum pump for a filling system, it's pretty simple. I used a, a canning, a degassing chamber, but you could also use a resin trap. This is only to separate the, um, the fluid that you're evacuating, the remaining fluid from the air compressor or the, the vacuum pump so you don't damage that uh, vacuum pump. But it is not um, really an integral part of this. However you do it, doesn't really matter. Uh, then you're gonna use a Harbor Freight style pressure chamber, which is uh, just really easily available, except for you're gonna set it up a little differently. Instead of having the little bypass hose, just put the air hose directly into the top and the line out directly out it's very simple okay so what you're going to do what you need to do with this system is you need to uh, have all the fluid removed which you would have achieved by compress compressing air through the system with each corner one at a time being disconnected and then you need to vacuum fill it okay so the way that i have it set up here is on these hoses uh, check valves and lines. Okay, so I have a check valve here, meaning that when fluid comes from the reservoir and goes into the car, it can't come backwards, so it can only fill. Then I have a close off valve here, uh, and then here's where I have my vacuum connector connected up to my degassing chamber with a close valve on either side of it. And then this goes directly into the car. So you connect both systems at the same time with these QC4 quick connects. And this way you can vacuum fill it at the same time. You have to do it together because you don't want to be pulling on one side of the shock and not the other. So you'll, you'll before connecting this, you'll go ahead and add some compressed air to this. I use 100 PSI air and you'll open this up a little bit and you'll open this up a little bit and you fill this with the CHF 11S and you just need to purge this out so that you have for sure fluid full all the way this line up until this valve. Once you see fluid coming out of here going toward your vacuum chamber, go ahead and close this off and then remove your and then close this off so it's not sitting here under pressure. Then you can run your vacuum connected to your degassing chamber until you see this valve stop going back. It should be like around, you know, 27, uh, negative 27 inches of mercury is what my gauge read. But you don't need to keep it running. You're not trying to boil water out of the system. You can if you want. It doesn't really matter. But you're just trying to get it till it stops. Once the vacuum stops, you'll close off the valve to the car and you'll close off the valve to the vacuum. That means that everything in this line is under vacuum. Everything in the car system is under vacuum. Once you do that, then you just open up the valve here to your fluid, which you'll put like three, four quarts of that CF CHF 11S in there. And it will vacuum fill the whole system. The whole system, this line, will all get filled with fluid. But that's not enough to get the car to start working again. Then you have to pressurize it. So then you just go ahead and open your valve here, open your valve here, open your valve here, and this will pressurize the whole car to 100 PSI, 120 PSI. This thing, I think I actually ran it at 120 PSI last time. Once you have it all at 120 PSI, close your valve, do, undo your disconnects, uh, make sure the, the valves, the QC valves you get to change on the car, if you use, do that way, have the check valve in them so they don't leak the fluid. It's supposed to, those, those connections need to keep the fluid in. I'll put the part number for both this quick connect and the one that the car in the system uh, on, in, the, in the description. And that's it. It'll run perfectly fine. Your Rivian's good. At the moment, there are no shops that do Rivian repair. Even if you wanted to have your car fixed at Rivian, if it's not under warranty, they don't have a service department to help you with that. These variators on the suspension or these accumulators will fail every four or five years, just like on the McLarens. Uh, and there's currently nobody in LA that does a McLaren accumulator repair except for me. Um, so this stuff works. It's easy. You don't need a $10,000 machine like McLaren sells. You just have to know how a vacuum and pressure fill system is. You can't have any air in there. And once you do that, then the problem's gone. And you can do stupid shit, as he liked to say. All right, so this is up under the ribbon. These are the lines that we had to replace. Um, and this is where up under the axle here. So this is the differential. 
So just behind it is a bar. Um, we actually just removed these uh, fittings, the factory ones, and it's a quarter MPT thread, male thread, coming off that line. And I replaced them with the QC4 from Schwage Lock, the same as it was on the McLaren connectors. Did that there and there. And then the pump is right here in this box. You just pop off all these little tabs. Um, and then you gotta be careful, there's a grommet right here on the side. And this will separate. And inside of there is the pump and the reservoir. It's a little like four mil Allen plug on top of the reservoir to fill it. The These are the pressure sensors for the system. And unlike the McLaren, there is no front and rear. Uh, it's all, it's left and right only. So the, the left rear shock is also connected to the left front shock in that loop in the compression and then rebound on the right side, front and back. And then the right side compression is rebound on the left side. Um, these are the solenoid, um, that trigger pressure to left or right side. So when you do the repair, if you have a leaking line or re replacing it, um, then what you're going to do is remove the pump, fill it to the brim with fluid, and then there's a little black cap on the back, or you can just um, you need to unplug the pump from the car and supply 12 volt positive to the um, black wire and negative to the white wire, and it'll run, and you'll hear it running with pressure like. Brrr. And then you'll just jump that solenoid and then you hear the pump spin up fast. You're just going to jump it for a moment, just like maybe one second, just to allow the fluid to fill this line and that one. And it looks like you have to trigger both of them to get fluid to flow through, but you don't. You just trigger the other one and it'll allow, you know, that means you've bled all the way up to here. Then you can, you know, disconnect. You know, you're only doing this for a few moments. So momentarily run the pump while someone holds that solenoid to power for a second, and then and then the and then turn the pump off, and then do the same with the other side. Okay, so you're just triggering the pump to get the this line bled out of air. Now you know that it's full of fluid. You re-top this off. Then um, to drain the system on each shock, you're gonna pull both lines out. Um, on one corner at a time. So this corner first. And you're gonna use my machine here, you know, that I use for the McLaren's to blow through clean air just to empty the line there. And you go to the one up front, empty the line, plug it back in, go to that one, unplug it, blow air through it, plug it back in, go to this one, unplug it, open it up, blow air through it. Um, I would do the rears first and then the fronts because you know it goes from the rear to the front. Then after that, um, draw use my machine, draw a vacuum on it with a resin trap like this to catch all the fluid. Once it gets down to you know vacuum like this and it holds, you don't need to keep running it like an A system, you're not boiling the water out of it, you just get it down until it stops going down, then shut off the supply from the vacuum. And then apply, I used 120 PSI air to pressurize everything and then it completely filled everything. See the lines? Completely full. And uh, yeah, now it's, it's, and then once you plug in the thing, it'll start working again. Man, Sweet. What up? Fucking hey. All right, first try I'm gonna leave it and I gotta fix it. So it was super bouncy before? Yeah, well, and I couldn't get into any of these menus. So now we get to do stupid shit. <laughs> I like doing stupid shit. Our babysitter's gonna be like, what the fuck? I'm like, sorry, I was working. Oh, yeah, that's right. Shit. So good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. Oh my god, I'm so juiced. Dang, it's such so quiet. Whoa! <laughs> nice, dude. That's a good it's fucking a rocket ship. Scene, bro. <laughs> Damn, dude. Dang, it just eats the road, dude. Fuck. 
Dang, and it the shocks worked really well. Like yeah. it just and I can ran over that. a major bump right there and didn't even feel it. Oh, holy shit, dude! <laughs> it's oh fast. damn! It is insanely fast. It is fast. Yeah, but then you can tell it kind of starts to drop off the more you floor it. Yeah, because it, it loses it's the hot. charge. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit! Fucking drift. That's badass. <laughs> Let's go straight, and then we'll turn it off stability control because I want to see. I want to floor it. Give me all of it. Turn off my shit. All right, head back. <laughs> it feels like an Aventador SV where 